The third pillar of Islam is the zakah, or we say poor tax, poor tax. And this is what we're going to talk about today briefly, inshallah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that Islam is built on five, five pillars, five columns. You knock down one of these five pillars, you have no Islam. You take away any one of these five pillars, you have no Islam. You take away the tenets of the shahada, you have no Islam. You don't believe in la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and everything that it entails, you don't have Islam. The second pillar, if you don't believe in the tenets of salat, you don't make the salat, or you don't think that it's necessary for you to make the salat, or that it's necessary to make the five salat, you think it's okay to make one salat, three salat, and that suffice, you will fall in the realm of Islam. Number three, which is the zakat, which we're talking about today, inshallah. If you don't believe in the zakat, or you don't pay the zakat, and you're able to pay the zakat, you will fall out of the realm of Islam. So these are the five pillars. But again, like I said, we're going to go through each one of these. We stopped last week on the salat. Today we're going to talk about zakat. So today, we're going to talk about zakat, or poor tax. There is a difference between zakat and sadaqah. There is a difference between zakah and sadaqah. Zakah is paid once a year and it is mandatory. A lot of people try to interchange zakat and sadaqah, but they are two different things. Zakah is paid once a year and it is two and a half percent of your net income. Net income means after your bills after paying all your debts for that year. Two and a half percent of your net income. Okay? If I had, we're going to start from, let's say, Ramadan to Ramadan. Because in the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Zakat was collected by the Sahabas. In the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Zakat was collected by the Sahabas by the order of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So this was something that was collected once a year by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu It was not something that you could just do if you like or don't do if you like. It was something that was mandatory and it was collected by the Sahabas and to the point that in the time of Abu Bakr when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu died they were ready to wage jihad or fight those who did not pay the zakat. So those who didn't pay the zakat or those who didn't break bread, when it was time to break bread and the sahabas came collecting it, they didn't want to break bread, then the sahabas were ready to go to war for that. So therefore, one who does not pay the zakat, he could become an apostate. Meaning he falls out of the realm of Islam. And his life and his blood is lawful now. Just for not paying the zakat. So this was done in the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu It was done at a specific time. Now today we have fallen out of the realm of Islam. Or we are not practicing the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Because we do not have a designated time that the salat, I mean excuse me, that the zakat is collected. Most of the people say that now, because we don't have a specific time, the best time to pay the zakat is during Ramadan. Okay, which would be a good time because best deeds are done during the time of Ramadan. Okay, so we're going to speak as if we're living in the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so we can go by the example. A-P-O-S-T-A-T-E, meaning out of Islam. When you become an apostate, that means that you are not Muslim anymore. So, in the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after, excuse me, after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died, because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't there no more, Abu Bakr sent some people to go collect the zakat. They said, man, we ain't paying that no more. Rasulullah Sallallahu he ain't here no more. So Abu Bakr said, man, surely if they don't give a shoestring, a shoestring, he said, if they don't give a shoestring like they gave in the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will fight them. Waste jihad on them. Go to war with them. For not paying the zakat. Some of the sahabas said, hold on, man. That sounds kind of harsh. He said, man, this is one of the pillars of Islam. But surely if they did it in the time of Rasulullah, they better do it now. And Abu Bakr was right. 
And some people, they got handled about this because they didn't want to pay the zakat. So not paying the zakat, if we establish a, a Beitul Mall, okay? Now the Beitul Mall, the Beitul Mall means the house of money. House of money. Beitul Mall, Beit, house, mall, means money. Beitul Mall. The Beitul Mall means where all the money was collected from zakat, it was put in a certain place. Okay, so they call it the Beit al Mall. So whenever they collected the zakat, they put it in a certain uh, uh, place that was called Beit al Mall. I don't want to say bank, but it was like a, a storage place just for the money that was collected for the zakat. Okay, can anybody tell me who was the first person who was the treasurer for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Who was the treasurer for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Balal ibn Rabah. Balal. Yeah, Balal ibn Rabah, he was the treasurer of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So not only was he the Muwazin, but he was also in charge of the money in Africa. Okay? Look it up. So Balal ibn Rabah, he was also the treasurer of the money. If you read some of the hadiths, it even states that in the time of the Eid, that Balal ibn Rabah, he went to go collect the money from the women and they were giving, taking off their jewelry and their gold and whatnot and they were putting it in a, uh, a sheet for Balaw Ridul because he was the treasurer. He was the one uh, collecting the money. Okay? And with regards to that hadith, that's also evidence that zakat is also paid on gold and silver. So women that have gold and silver laying around, you have to pay zakat on that. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Those who have gold and silver, you have to pay the count on that. Those who have businesses, right, and you have stuff that has monetary value, but you haven't sold it yet, you still got to pay the count on that. It, it don't just mean paper money. Okay? So when you pay the zakat, these are some of the things that the zakat is warranted on. So we already know paper money, you got to pay the count on that. Also, zakat is due on gold and silver. Also, zakat is on merchandise that you have. You got a store, right? You got clothing or stuff like that, or shoes, or, and it has monetary value. You got to pay zakat on that. Also, on crops, you got date, you got orange trees and date trees and stuff like that. You have to pay zakat on that as well. And you have to pay zakat on cattle, sheep, goats, right? You got cows, stuff like that. Crops, merchandise, merchandise, meaning stuff like you own a store, you got stuff in the store, you got clothing, you got shoes, you got purses, perfume, or anything like that that has monetary value. You're going to get money from it, okay? We're not saying the retail value of it, but your wholesale value of it, whatever you pay for it, okay? It has some type of net worth. You still got to pay the account on that. Those who, make you an example, you got an oil shop, that's worth money, okay? You have to pay the account on that. You have to pay the account on it because it's worth money. You got a clothing store, all that stuff is worth money. You got to pay the account on that. Some brothers, like I know one of the brothers, he started giving away certain shoes and stuff like that for Zakat. Okay? So Zakat is mandatory. Okay? Now there's different uh, percentages for these things. But the overall is 2.5% of your net income. Now if you want to make everything and make it into a monetary value, 2.5% of that. If you have gold and silver, we have what is called a Nisab. Nisab. Okay? Which is the bare minimum. With the gold, it's three ounces. If you got more than three ounces of gold, you got to pay the count on it. With the silver, I think it's 22 ounces. But let me double check on that. There is a Nisab. If you have more than 22 ounces of silver, you got to pay the count on that. You got more than three ounces of gold, you have to pay the count on that. Two and a half percent of that. Okay? Or if you make it monetary value, you pay two and a half percent of that. Now the Nisab of gold, it's about $3,000. So those who use the Nisab of gold, 
If you got more than $3,000 for the whole year, then you have to pay zakat. If you go lower than $3,000 throughout the year, then you don't have to pay zakat because you went below the nisab. You guys understand that? I could have $10,000 at one time, $100,000, go down to $3,000, go up to five, then I had $1,000. If I go below that nisab, I don't have to pay zakat within that year span. And we say from Ramadan to Ramadan. Okay? If you went below $3,000, if you're using the nisab of the gold, you don't have to pay zakat. If you're using the nisab of the silver, which I think this year it was about $450. So some like you use the nisab of the gold because it makes it easy for them. So the nisab for the gold is $3,000. So if you go less than $3,000, a lot of people like to use the nisab for the gold. So it takes them out of the realm of being responsible, right, or mandatory for them to pay the zakat. Some of those who have more taqwa, they use the nisab of 450, which is the nisab of the silver, which is $450. So if you have more than 450 throughout the year, whatever it was over that 450, you get, you pay two and a half percent of that, which is really nothing. Okay? This is mandatory once a year, not every time you go to church, 10% of your, of, your, of your income, like they try to do in the church. This is oppression. Okay? And it doesn't go to, it goes to the needy. All of this for the zakat is supposed to go to the needy. The zakat, it goes to specific people. Okay? The zakat, Allah tells us in the Quran who the zakat goes to. Well, I'm going to tell you. Once you find out, then inshallah, you highlight this in your Quran, asterisk it in your Quran, or memorize it. Chapter 9, verse 60. Chapter 9, verse 60 of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. Who the zakat is supposed to be paid to. We can't just give it to who we want to pay it to. We can't just keep it and do what we want with it. Because this is a trust from Allah. Okay, so the zakat, it goes to certain people. Certain people, a certain caliber of people. Okay, and we're going to go through each one of them, inshallah. Allah states, A'udhu billahi bin shaitan rajim. as But in this ayah, it means the zakat. It says sadaqah in this ayat, but it's speaking about the zakat. The sadaqah here means zakat are for the fuqara. So number one is the fuqara, which means the poor. So the zakat, number one, is supposed to be given to the poor, those who are needy. Number two, the miskin. The miskin. Or we say the needy. Now they have a difference of the poor and difference of the needy, but both of them are poor and needy. Describing whom the miskeen are, Abu Huraira radiallahu an reports that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, The miskeen is not the one who goes around the people and asks them for a mouthful or two for meals or dates or two, but the miskeen, the needy, is that who has not enough money to satisfy his needs and whose condition is not known to others that others may give him something in charity and who does not beg of the people so the miskeen is one who he's needy right he's needy but the people don't think that he's needy because he doesn't look like the needy because he doesn't ask but the poor is the one you know he's you know he needs it and he's the one that's asking for it so there's a difference the miskeen is one who doesn't ask. He comes up short, or she may come up short, but they don't ask. The people don't, don't see it in them because they say, oh, well, he got it all right. He looks like he's all right, or she looks like he's all right, but they don't ask the people. Okay? The fuqara are those who are poor. You know that they're poor. They're out here in the street. They ain't got enough to even have a house over their head. You know. Okay? So there's a difference. But there's a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those are the ones who don't ask, but there's people who know that they need it. So without them even asking it, they're given by the people. Because you know, like you know who needs it or who don't know, who don't need it. Right? Even though they don't possess it or show that they're needy, 
They still need it. They come up short. It's hard for them. The bills are short. But they're not showing it to the people because they're trying to do without and they're trying to have fear of Allah, not asking people. These are the meskeen. So again, chapter 9, verse 60. The zakat are only for the fuqara, the poor, and the meskeen, the needy, and those employed to collect the funds. So also, those who collect the zakat, they get a portion of the zakat, those who collect it. Those who collect the zakat, like Balao ibn Abba, or those who go out and collect the zakat, like, hey, time to break bread, time to break bread, right? They collect the zakat from the people, they get a portion because this, they're, employed, they're employed to do this. Okay, they just didn't do it on their own accord, they got to spend gas and all this other stuff. Right, are those who are the ones that pass it out and collect it and make sure that people get it, they can get a portion of it as well. This is what Allah says, not what we say, this is what Allah says. So yes, those who collect it, they can get a portion of the zakat as well, but we got to fear Allah and not taking all of it. Okay, so the people that collect it, you got to make sure that they have taqwa, that they fear Allah, right, and they're not putting no fire in their belly. Okay, you don't upsert the money. Allah said, uh, those who have searched for money, those who don't collect the zakat, that it will turn into a snake on them on the day of judgment, wrap around the neck and bite them. Okay? Those who play with this money. So those who collect it, pass it out and whatnot, they got to fear Allah in, in doing this. So again, those who are fuqara, those who are poor, those who are the miskeen, those who really come up short, but you don't know it because they don't ask. Number three, those who are employed to collect it, Number four, and to attract the hearts of those who have been inclined towards Islam. So meaning for da'wah, to bring people to the deen. So number four is to bring people to the deen. Right? There's some people that come, they want to learn about Islam. Right? We give them from the zakat. Hey, I need a couple of dollars. I need $20. Like some of the people that come over here, they ask for money. Can y'all help us out? I need some shoes. Y'all got something to eat. It's okay to take from the zakat and give to them because this will soften their hearts and incline them to Islam. Like, man, them Muslims, man, they, they cool, man. They gave us clothes the other day. They gave us some food the other day. Man, I didn't have no shoes on my feet, man. They told me to go ahead and grab some shoes. So this is from the zakat as well, meaning to bring the people to the deen to soften their heart. Also, Allah subhanahu wa says, and to free the captives. To free the captives, meaning we can take from the zakat and pay some ransom money, right, to free the captives. This can mean ransom, somebody kidnapped your brother, they asking for a, a, a ransom or something, we can take that out of the zakat, right? Or maybe your brother, he has been uh, illegally uh, incarcerated. One of your brothers got incarcerated, he might need some of that bail money. He might need some bail money. Go get your brother. Get him out. Huh? I need to get out, man. Y'all need to come on. I need y'all to help me. They got me. They got me captive. Huh? They try to, they try to put me away for 25 to life. They try to kill me. I need that bail money, man. Go on and get from the Zakat money, man, to help me out. Okay? Yeah. Number six. And for those who are in debt. Those who are in debt. So to help out with debt, so to help out with those who have debt, you can't pay your uh, PG&E bill, right? You, it's hard, you, got, you need help with your rent money, right? They don't charge you uh, a gang of uh, fees or whatnot, right? Because in a society, they do that. Man, uh, they said, man, if I don't pay this, man, uh, they're going to lock me up. I got this debt I got to pay, right? Man, I need help. So this would come out of the zakat as well, right? According to Allah's for the law. And for Allah's cause, meaning for jihad. Number seven, for Allah's cause, right? This could be jihad, fighting the cause of Allah. Man, we need weapons. We need this, we need saddles, we need swords, we need whatever that comes from the zakat, right? Or it could be for da'wah material. Hey man, I'm, I'm doing jihad with the tongue. Right? We have in class, man, I need some books. 
We need some books printed up. Right? So we can teach the masses. I need that out the zakat money. I, I ain't supposed to pay that out of my own pocket. We need that out of zakat money because we're giving dawah. We're trying to, for a lost cause. Alright? We're giving dawah. We need to print these books. We need to advocate this dean. We need some money to advocate this dean. Uh, we need to uh, get a PA system or whatever it may be. We need CDs. We need DVDs so we can pass out this dean. Okay? All of this is for a lost cause. So zakat is paid for this as well. Or it comes out of the zakat box. Or it comes out of the Beit Mall for this cause as well. We need these things. And for the wayfarer, meaning the traveler who was cut off from everything. So number eight, also the traveler. Without means. Sometimes people that come through, come through Fresno, they might be coming from another city. Their car breaks down, right? They spent all their money and they ain't got no money now to get back to wherever they, wherever they went or they need help getting their car fixed. Or, hey, brother, we need, I need a ticket to San Diego. I need a ticket to L.A. I need a ticket, man. I need to get home. I don't got no money. This comes from the Zakat box. This comes from the Beit Mall. Okay? We should give it to them if we have it. Okay? If we have it. But this is how the Zakat is supposed to go. It's supposed to go like this. But at the same time, we have to fulfill our obligation in paying the Zakat. If ain't nobody paying the zakat, what's going to be in the zakat box? What's going to be in the bank tomorrow? Everybody take it from but there ain't nothing being put in it. Ain't no money. So again, let me, let, me, let me make this clear. If we pay it properly, right, meaning it's collected once a year, right, we do a census, which inshallah, I'm trying to put together a, a bank tomorrow. I'm putting together a little constitution and get everybody's name and addresses and whatnot. So then inshallah we can start calling people up. Hey man, it's that time of the month. It's that time of the year. Zakat time. You got it? Okay, break bread. Oh, you can't tell me. Oh, man, Allah said this, bro. You belong to this community. We know that you're rich. We know you got a business. You got a car dealership. Bro, you got to break bread. It's, it's Ramadan time. We need that zakat. Or, like in the time of Rasulullah, if we get our act together, bro, we're going to take that. Right? This is the utopian idea. This is how it's supposed to go. But we got to get it right first. We can't go take nothing unless we got it together first. We got to know our deen first. We got to make sure that we have stopped all the things that we're not supposed to be doing so that we straight, so that we can do these things. So if we pay it properly, meaning we collect it properly, and everybody pays like they're supposed to, then we can give it properly. But the first thing is having knowledge of this. The first thing is having knowledge of this sunnah, having knowledge of this uh, uh, sharia, having knowledge of this ruling. How is it paid or how do we do it? It's supposed to be collected? Well, how come we're not collecting it? Oh, well, we need to work on how to collect it now. Who do we collect it from? Oh, it has to be from the members of Masjid Aqaba because they come to Masjid Aqaba to get it. So now we got to collect it from the people that come to Masjid Aqaba. We got to do a consensus. We have to do a census. Who are all the people of Masjid Aqaba? Who attends Masjid Aqaba? And we have to get a census. Get names, addresses, phone numbers, emails. Right? You're a member of Masjid Aqaba? Okay. What's your name? What's your address? What's your email address? Da 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 da. What's your place of business? Oh, you want a car dealership? Hmm. Oh, you sell rims and tires? Hmm. Okay. Well, look, man, starting next year at Ramadan, at this date, we're going to come collect that zakat, right, and break bread with it, okay? That's the utopian idea. That's how it's supposed to go. If everybody paid their zakat, these car dealers, these, these uh, doctors, these lawyers, these engineers, we have a big old pot in the Beit Mall. So then when the people come and get it, or they come to request it, it's easy for us to pay it. Okay? But this is how it's supposed to go. But we got to know this first. That's why we're giving this knowledge. This is about zakat.